two members who are current members currently who will be here to um, present and then I'll finish by discussing member recruitment for our upcoming 2015-16 surface year. If you do have any questions as we go through the presentation today, please feel free to go ahead and type them into the box. You each should have a question box on your control panel. Um, and I will probably be answering some questions as we go along, and then we'll definitely have time at the end to answer any remaining questions. So to start off, what is Civic Spark? Well, we are an AmeriCorps program dedicated to building capacity for local governments to address climate change. We're a governor's initiative program, which basically means that the governor of California identified climate change in Okay, I'll go ahead and move on. I apologize if um, our internet is a little spotty here. And so slides may flick back and forth, um, but I'll try to continue on and hopefully that won't be too distracting. I was mentioning that we are a Governor's Initiative AmeriCorps program, which basically means that the Governor of California identified climate change and specifically Civic Spark, which is addressing climate change as a high priority need. It also means that the um, Governor's Office of Planning and Research helps us here at the Local Government Commission who manages Civic Spark in really sort of taking care of the implementation of our program. As a member, this really would benefit you as OPR can provide more resources access to training, information, and really networking that you wouldn't otherwise have. I also mentioned that um, Civic Spark is an AmeriCorps program. And AmeriCorps is a nationwide service program where volunteers dedicate a specific set of time to addressing community issues. For us, the time is 11 months, and of course the issue is climate change. Although this is Civic Spark's first year, the 2014-15 service year was our first year year, AmeriCorps has actually been around since 94, so been around for quite some time, only over about 80,000, sort of be part of a bigger movement. Civic Spark places our 48 AmeriCorps members that we have each year into what we call climate readiness teams of anywhere between three and eight AmeriCorps members in nine regional hubs throughout California. In each of the region, members are supported by their supervisor. We have a regional supervisor in each of the areas, as well as a regional partner. And a regional partner is really a local agency who's already immersed in the region and already working on addressing climate change. This is very beneficial because it allows the members not only to have support um, just to do their projects, but also to really understand the context in the environment of their different regions. During the 11-month year, members impact nearly 100 local governments through building capacity for them to address climate change. In the map that you see up right now, you'll notice some of the locations of the communities that we're currently working with. Next year, some of these communities will be the same and some will be different. Teams might be larger in some regions and smaller in other regions. We really set up the program so that it was flexible to the needs of our local governments that we're helping so that we can respond by providing more capacity help to those areas that need it most year by year. So what does it mean to be an AmeriCorps member and to be a specifically a Civic Spark member? As a member, you'd be linked with a project based on your interest, your region, your skills, and your experience. You'd spend the majority of your 1,700 hours working on that specific project, 
um, although you'd have trainings, team days, and service days to supplement your project work. Some projects will require a team of members, so in some cases members within the region all work on the same project, let's say, or you might have multiple teams um, within a specific region. Laura, when she speaks soon, will probably mention that she's working sort of within a sub-team within her large, larger regional team. Other projects, though, will be individual. And Kyle is actually working on an individual project. And in this case, some of the members might even work from a specific office away from the rest of the group. In all cases, though, training, team activities, and team environment is created through those sort of additional supplemental work. I do have some examples of some of our projects coming up, um, but just to reiterate, members spend a total of 1,700 hours or approximately 11 months with Civic Spark. Our next service term will start on October 19th. All of our members will start at that time, and it will go through about mid-September. Briefly before going into the examples, I want to touch on our three main project goals. The first already um, spend the majority of our times on is to provide implementation and capacity building assistance to 94 local governments. And that's 94 local governments each year. Again, exactly where these local governments might be and who they are year to year does change. All of our service activities and sort of our second goal have an opportunity to develop volunteer services and recruiting and supporting volunteers, oftentimes for the same local governments that you're already working with. Some projects have a heavier focus on working with volunteers. This year we had some projects that didn't really get a chance to work with that many volunteers at all. Um, other projects, it touches on it, but it might be a, a larger component of your work. In all cases, though, all members get the chance to sort of engage and work with volunteers throughout the service year, or at least on volunteer service, uh, or excuse me, volunteer services, building the capacity for these local governments to work with volunteers in the future. And then finally, our third goal that I'll mention is we do focus on member development. And this is providing training, networking, and skill set development opportunities for our members throughout the year. It's our goal to make sure that each member is able to grow, to build new skill sets, and to really have an experience with Civic Spark that they wouldn't be able to have in just a basic entry level job or with an internship or other possibilities out there. I mentioned earlier that members over the year might work on multiple projects within a team, maybe working um, independently uh, with, um, on a single project or in a specific office away from the rest of the team. Really there's an opportunity as well for members to work on more than just a single project during the year. Not all of our members get this opportunity, but some of our members um, in specific regions might have the opportunity to work on multiple projects with multiple local governments. Again, in all cases, members will be able to receive specific training to prepare them for their role and to gain project management experience. Because our project partners, those local governments that we work with, change year to year, all of our projects are also different. It depends on the needs of the community and really where they're ready to step up and start taking action as to what types of projects we will work with. Just to give you an example, I will of course have Laura and Kyle speak specifically about their projects in a few moments, but to give you a few examples of other projects that we've worked with, with this year. We have worked on anything resiliency, greenhouse gas emission reduction, and that also includes working with climate action planning, um, both actually developing the climate action plans and implementing them. Alternative transportation, anything from working with alternative fuels to alternative um, vehicles to even working with an iCommute program down in San Diego where it's educating residents on options other than just single um, person car use as to getting doing your daily commute and then urban greening as well. Um, one that sort of fits in with urban greening and isn't exactly up there is also of course water conservation with the current drought that is going to be a big focus of um, some of our projects next year as well. 
To give you a better understanding, though, of what members might do rather than just list these project examples, um, I do have our two members, Laura Mosier and Kyle Ramey, here to speak with you about their experience. I'm going to let them share their project scopes and what they've been able to gain with Civic Spark. And I'm going to take just one second to go ahead and load other um, presentations. So your screen might go blank for a second. And again, I apologize for um, having some of these technical difficulties today. Things seem to be going a little bit slower in our office than they should be. <laughs> as soon as I get this presentation up, I'll go ahead and have Laura share her experience. We're just getting this presentation up. I hear you guys have a black screen right now. So it might just be a few more minutes to get this up. And again, thank you for your patience. Laura, maybe I'll have you just go ahead and introduce yourself and sort of start, and we'll hope that um, the presentation catches up with you. <laughs> hey, sounds good. Thanks, Kristen. Um, as Kristen mentioned, I'm Laura Moser, and I'm part of the Sacramento Civic Spark team. I don't know what all your backgrounds are, so I'll just share my experience of the program, and if it resonates with you, then I'm happy to talk more and answer any questions that you might have. Let's see, am I controlling this? Are you right? All right. So my Civic Spark journey, I guess, began in summer 2014. I graduated in the spring with a degree in civil and environmental engineering and started working on construction sites doing environmental compliance. But as I was doing this, I found myself a lot more interested in the policies that drove the regulations and how society was changing and, and creating them rather than just the, the compliance and the monitoring of it. And so I started looking into how I might integrate more, oh, there we go, switching, um, how I might integrate more into the, the policy aspect of things and wondering how I could really make an impact and explore this relationship between society and the environment. I was looking at grad school programs and Peace Corps and uh, how I could use my degree at the same time. And then I came across an ad for Civic Spark. And it seemed ideal to me. There was the component of meaningful work, the volunteer experience, Plus, it, I could use my, my degree a little bit. It was kind of a unique AmeriCorps program in that it draws more on, on your education and, and what you can bring to the table. And then, plus, there was that exposure to government and policy, which is really what I was looking for as far as transitioning or exploring those different worlds. So I applied Civic Spark a little late, so it was a quick process. And before I knew it, I was in Sacramento working on a project. I'm uh, working on... I'm working with a, another Civic Spark member, so it's two of us who are working to create a regional vulnerability assessment for the Sacramento region. Hopefully, you'll be able to see soon a little more of that. Um, so, this vulnerability assessment the idea is that we're looking at how climate change will affect the area. 
We're looking into precipitation changes and extreme heat, how that might cause landslides and wildfires. And then once we figure out what's going to happen, we want to know how the transportation system is going to be impacted, whether that's road running or flooding, or bridges overtopping, road closures or washouts in the landslides and the like, just how, how the transportation system might be negatively impacted by climate change. And once we, once we can determine that, we want to see if there are adaptation options, what kind of opportunities are there to be able to better adapt to these changing conditions and create a, a resilient infrastructure system. I don't have arrows anymore, but hopefully the slideshow will keep going. Um, and so far in this project, what we've done is basically that first part. We created a climate impacts report. We gathered data from different climate models. We were looking at different levels of greenhouse gas emissions through the end of the century, century to determine what the region's going to look like. And this took a few months of data analysis. We were using mostly ArcGIS and Excel to create these databases and analyze and eventually created a 40-page report, which we turned in and started presenting to a couple different audiences. And it was really encouraging because we received some, some positive feedback and it sounds like the, the agency can really use the research that we've done. We're just awaiting some final feedback on that now and as we're starting to transition into doing that analysis of the transportation system itself and trying to determine how we can adapt to, how, how we might be able to adapt it to the changing conditions. And so as an AmeriCorps program, not all work and be able to build camaraderie that way. And then I really enjoyed, we recently took a trip, we coordinated with a few different regions sort of in the Northern California area and traveled to Hoplin to go to a sustainable living institute of sorts and got to all camp out together and do some volunteering and just really had a great bonding experience with that as well. And you can see some of the pictures of us there. The top center one is the group that went to Hoplin and that was a lot of fun. So overall, I personally had a great experience with Civic Spark. I've had the opportunity for the professional development side of things and been able to not only the, the structured trainings, like we this last week we had a project management training and there's been other opportunities for, for that formal job training, but then there's also the access to individuals that might be otherwise hard to reach for informational interviews or just interaction. Like at the Air District, there are some really great staff members who are who are highly involved in California environmental policy, and it's been really awesome to be able to interact with them. Civic Spark is a unique program as you're considering it. Uh, it's not like an entry level job, and especially depending on the project, you're probably not going to be given necessarily a task list of things to do every day or or that sort of thing. It's more of a, an overall project, and so it, it helps if you have that that self motivation. You wanna you wanna be able to have that creativity to determine how you need to complete a project and what you need to do to to get things done, and and have that incentive on your own. Combined with sort of a patience, since you're working with local government, there can be some bureaucracy, and you have to retain the the positivity and and work through it, especially in a field like climate change that can be challenging and be flexible enough to maybe determine how to best help the agency as things change as you keep going along in your project. But if these are things that you can do, then Civic Spark is a really fantastic experience, at least from my perspective. There's cool projects, you get the fulfillment of the service and that that year of, of kind of devoting to, to something, to this bigger thing going on. You get, the independence on your project can be a really good thing if you like to kind of take it in your direction and you enjoy doing your, your own uh, research and, and that. Um, 
And then the camaraderie of the teammates is great. I've really enjoyed the other Civic Spark members, plus the, the professional and personal development opportunities that I was mentioning. I feel like I have a lot more direction and idea of, of who I am and where I want to fit into things as a result of this program. So again, this has just been my experience, and I'm happy to answer more questions later if you'd like. But for now, I'll turn it over to Kyle so that you can hear his perspective on the program. Thank you so much, Laura. And Kyle, I'm going to get your slides up um, and go ahead and give you control. Again, it might just take a little bit of time for the slides to come up, but if you want to go ahead and start, hopefully they'll be up by the time you need to move them. Oh, looks like you got that one up pretty quick. There we go. <laughs> okay, so it's ready to go? You are ready. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Kristen. So, hi, everyone. As Kristen mentioned, my name is Kyle Ramey, and I'm part of the Civic Spark Bay Area team, and I work in the San Mateo County on um, water energy nexus initiatives. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of, of an overview of my project, my responsibilities, and the things that I've accomplished during my time with Civic Spark, and uh, really just to explain my personal experience so far during the service year. Okay, um, so I graduated um, last December, I believe, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> With an environmental studies, um, environmental studies uh, bachelor of, bachelor of, of arts in um, in sustainability and social justice, and uh, I was really looking for a way to jumpstart my environmental career and, and really needed some experience. So um, I, I heard about the Civic Spark program, and shortly after I joined, I was placed in the San Mateo County with two project beneficiaries. The goal of the service year was to hopefully establish a lasting relationship between these two public agencies so that they could further assist the county on water-related initiatives and help them meet their climate action planning goals. The first organization I represent is the Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency, or BOSCA. Um, it represents the interests of 24 cities and water districts and two private utilities that purchase water wholesale from the San Francisco Regional Water System. Um, their goals are to I work in San Mateo County, but specifically in Redwood City, and one day a week I'm in San Mateo at the Bosca office. Um, and a big part of my job is actually coordinating these efforts with cities, municipalities, and the general public. There we go. Um, so throughout the service year, I've been uh, assigned certain responsibilities, and I just wanted to go through those briefly with you guys. Um, for Bosca, my main job uh, is to develop and manage community outreach campaigns to increase participation in our water efficiency and water energy nexus programs. Um, but specifically, I work on water conservation programs. Um, so what does that necessarily entail? Well, I spent a large portion of my first couple of months with Bosca traveling to retailers that sell the applicable products for our rebate programs, um, conducting outreach, educating the staff on these programs so that they can better assist customers, and then checking for product availability, the applicable products that you find in some of these retailers. Um, we wanted to make sure that they were carrying them so we could refer customers to them. Um, so the, the main programs that I work on are the Long Be Gone program, which is basically a turf replacement program that pays you um, per square footage of converted landscape to drought tolerant landscape. Um, I also work on the high efficiency toilet rebates, just switching out your toilet for a more high efficient model um, and we'll pay you for that as well. Um, and then we also provide rebates for the, in, the purchase and installation of rain barrels. And then I also work a little bit on landscape education classes and provide workshops for the general public, landscape contractors, or, um, or employees. Um, and then I also assist on um, data and cost-benefit analysis for the rebate programs. So this entails analyzing customer purchase trends and checking product availability to determine the most effective rebate structure that we present to the Water Resources Committee. But I'll get to what that is in a bit.
will catch okay. up in just one second. Cool. Thank you. So um, for the Energy Watch, so I just went through my basket of responsibilities, but for the Energy Watch, my original job was to benchmark the water use in K-12 through public schools throughout San Mateo County. Um, however, after analyzing the previous fellow's work, it was extremely difficult for me to continue what she had already started due to lack of technical understanding, and none of the schools that she worked with actually took large steps to move forward with this implementation. So we've now decided to provide school districts with resources to assist in water conservation, and some of these resources include professional water auditors, free retrofits from their uh, corresponding water agency, or water use reports that we generate from landscape contractors and others. Um, additionally, and as I mentioned before, I, uh, I am kind of the link between the Energy Watch the water and the water agencies because of my work with Bosca. I coordinate with water agencies to try and get schools to implement water saving measures. Um, basically, what do the schools need and how can we get those resources from the water agencies? The other thing I am responsible for is um, creating presentations in order to increase community awareness and participation in water conservation programs. But I'll get to those in a second. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the successes that I've experienced during my time with Civic Spark. Um, personally, I've developed an implemented a new public water conservation education program. Um, so we decided to pilot this water conservation 101 with the Mid Peninsula Water District at the Belmont Library. Um, we didn't market it at all because it was just a pilot, uh, but we still had about 35 attendees. Um, the curriculum I developed um, with the help of Bosca and Mid Penn representatives uh, was a success as we had people engaged in asking questions. It seems as though like this drought is in the forefront of a lot of people's minds, um, and not to say that I'm a proponent of the drought at all. Um, but being able to work within a water agency during the drought has actually been a huge opportunity because more people are engaged about the conserving water and have found out what it, and I've also found out what it looks like when all hands are on deck at water agencies. Um, other water agencies have shown interest in this curriculum and hopefully plan to implement it in their own service areas. Um, for the more, I've also conducted um, our our Lawn Be Gone training workshops at retail locations, um, mainly to educate the staff on the program requirements, and uh, we are about to do one for landscape contractors so we can refer customers to them. Um, getting these people up to date on the program qualifications and requirements is, is really key in getting um, customers engaged and making it an easy process for them. Um, customers will like uh, when they have someone who is familiar with the program and walk them through it and, and work with them on it. Um, I also mentioned before that I have created multiple presentations and given them to key stakeholders, such as RICAPS, which is usually integrated climate action planning suite, which uh, it's a, basically a coalition of cities working on their uh, climate action planning goals. Um, and then I've also given uh, my outreach um, updates to the Water Resources Committee and program changes as well that us at Bosca have decided to, um, to implement. Um, this, this was on its, uh, oh, and then finally, um, I got a chance to coordinate the water conservation, um, I should say exposition, but uh, the expo at the Silicon Valley Water Conservation Awards. It was a great opportunity to coordinate with vendors um, who have amazing products for their water for water conservation and take a lead in, it was great for me to take a leading role in uh, organizing the event. Um, so for the Energy Watch, I've been able to develop a school audit and retrofit program. Um, as I've mentioned, um, we are looking for other routes to assist schools with water conservation implementation and trying to make it as easy as we can for them. And um, the development of this program could really help with that. Although it is not in place yet, we do have a structure and just need a water agency really to sign on. Um, nevertheless, it was a, a great opportunity to put a program down on the paper that can really do great things for schools who are ready to move forward on water conservation initiatives. We've also been um, seen a general increase in overall participation in almost all of our rebate programs, especially the Lawn Be Gone program, which, is, which has been my main focus. And I'm not quite sure if this is because of the drought or my outreach, but something is, is definitely working. And when I mentioned my original goal of being the link between the two organizations, it seems as though it is, uh, it is working as, a, as collaborative efforts and communication has increased between water agencies and the Energy Watch. Um, in addition, schools are showing a little bit more interest, and uh, I believe this relationship will last uh, a lot longer than after I leave. All right, and then um, 
finally, I wanted to talk um, about some of the personal accomplishments that I've had, some of the skills that I've developed, the, the networks that I've that I've built. Um, one of the main reasons I joined CivicSpark was to develop my skills and networks in order to start my career within this field, and I believe that CivicSpark has definitely delivered on that end. Um, I've become a lot more proficient in PowerPoint and getting better at Excel every day. These are you know, really crucial programs to be familiar with, and I urge people to really practice them because they will be in almost any job you can think of. They're really great tracking tools and presenting tools. Um, also, my presentation skills are 10 times better than they ever were. Um, if you asked me a year ago to give these presentations to a large audience, I probably would have run the other way. But um, being forced in these situations has really helped my confidence, and I'm, I'm able to really convey my message in a way that people respond to and understand. Um, also, being in an office environment can be a new experience for some people. I know it was for me, um, but I have to say being in an office environment uh, day in and day out has helped my professional behavior um, and really just be able to, to to convey some of the things that I want to say in meetings and just you know, just really get that to understand you know, what, what it takes to be in a professional environment. Um, I've uh, also increased my data uh, analysis skills and I've been able to apply the data to real-world situations and differing program changes. I've been able to uh, build networks as well and um, connections that I know will help me down the road, which is one of the most the most important things when starting your career. It's uh, It's been great because I get to work with a lot of local governments, uh, water agencies, and various companies who are leading the way in water conservation. Um, I definitely would not have had these opportunities if it wasn't for CivicSpark. Um, and lastly, I want to talk a little bit, bit about the gratification of the work. Um, working to enhance measures in water conservation is key, especially during this time, and, um, and I get a personal gratification out of it. Creating formative resources, such as the conservation class I previously mentioned, um, that cities, governments, and the public can use is um, equally as gratifying, knowing that I created something that others can find useful in their everyday work lives. And just generating general knowledge about our key resources on experience that will um, make you attractive to future employers. Um, if you are also searching for a way to make a direct impact in your community in the fight against climate change, um, Civic Spark provides a way to work with local governments in assisting cities and municipalities in meeting their climate action planning goals. And then finally, you will make connections that will last. I've made a lot of friends throughout the service year, and I know they will last a lot longer after Civic Spark is over. Um, and you know, you can always use these connections professionally and personally, you know, to help you as you advance your career. Um, so that's all I have for you guys. But thanks for listening um, about my personal experience, and I hope you found this useful and can use some of this information to help make your decision on where you want to take your environmental career. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you again, Laura, both of you um, definitely have had some great experiences this year, and I'm glad that you were able to take some time to share them with the rest of um, those joining us today. Again, if anyone has any questions specifically um, for Laura or Kyle, please feel free to ask them. We will have a little bit of time at the end to cover anything, um, any questions that you might have. But before we jump to questions, I did want to just take a little bit of time to review the member recruitment process. Um, we are planning on opening the application in late June. So just within the next few weeks, the application will open. If you have not visited our website yet and had a chance to sign up to be notified, when the application does open, please um, make a point to do so as that is a great way to sort of get that information as soon as it opens, you can fill out the application. Um, we'll start interview process basically immediately. And selected candidates will go through an, an interview process that starts with our state Civic Spark staff and eventually goes to the different regions. Applicants will have the opportunity to list the regions
questions that they're interested in. And if you told, it may be that after you go through the interview process, you decide, hey, you know, San Francisco isn't the best fit for me. I'd, I'd much prefer Sacramento or the Sierras, and instead could select those regions and go through the interview process in that region instead. Um, typically, it does look like this year we will have a two interview stage process at the state level and then at that point of time you would be referred to the region of um, that was the best fit for your skills, for your interests, for your experience and dependent on the projects that we have lined up in that region and then we'll go through local interviews at that point of time. Our goal is to have most candidates hired by the beginning of October. As I mentioned earlier, we will start our orientation October 19th. Um, and projects will start in early November, and the service year will continue through September of 2016. Just quickly going through a few other pieces, I did want to highlight the member qualifications, and I'm not going to read them through. You can look at them as I'm speaking, but really the big pieces that we're looking at with anyone who is qualified for this program is there is a requirement to have a four-year degree, um, typically in an environmentally related field. A lot of times this doesn't have to necessarily be specifically environmentally related. We do have um, members this year who maybe have an engineering background or more of a social science background. So definitely that that does have and then we do some professions or around sustainability or in the environmental field. And ideally when possible with local governments. Again, they're looking for candidates who are willing to make a commitment to the Civic Spark program for an 11-month period of time and really to grow through the program. So in some cases, it may not fit exactly in with these qualifications, um, but really we want to see that you have the interest, the passion for addressing climate change and the experience, um, that at least that base level experience to understand how to, how to go about doing so. I did mention earlier we do have an orientation that's a week-long orientation and a lot of that orientation does focus on maybe giving specific um, or building specific skill sets, gaining knowledge on California policies. For example, that maybe if you're not from California but interested in Civic Spark could be helpful for you. I also did want to quickly touch on the benefits. Um, benefits of Civic Spark are like all AmeriCorps programs. They basically all provide the same benefits over the year, although Civic programs sort of some small differences. So quickly, I'll review ours. We do have a $14,000 living allowance, and that's before taxes. It's spread evenly over the service term. Um, there is the education award, and this education award for this upcoming year is going to be $5,775. That's distributed at the end of completing your 1,700 hours, and it can be used to either go back to school or to pay off existing qualified student loans. The qualified student loans are also able to be put on forbearance during the, um, during the service year. Forbearance is a lot like deferment. You don't have to pay anything on the loans. They will continue to accrue interest, but AmeriCorps will pay off that interest at the end of the year. Um, and just quickly touching on, I've mentioned this qualified student loans. Qualified student loans are any federally backed student loans. So if you did take out a personal loan, it may not fit within this forbearance or being able to use the Siegel Education Award on them. Most loans are federally backed, though. Uh, we do also provide health insurance, uh, child care if necessary, and then, of course, something that Kyle mentioned, the network development with the regional and statewide contacts in the climate perfection, uh, per, <laughs> protection field, I think, is one of the key benefits that you do get with our program. And then very lastly, I just wanted to um, touch on is Civic Spark right for me? Both Laura and Kyle actually did speak about how this program is not maybe your typical AmeriCorps program. Um, in a lot of ways, you're not going to be out in the community sort of doing hands-on work or talking to different residents. It is an opportunity to build skill sets, um, to really sort of 
get your foot in the door when it comes to working within climate change and sustainability. And in a lot of ways, it's not so much that entry level position as an opportunity to take ownership of a specific project and really sort of see that project implemented all the way through. You do have support throughout the service here, but as Laura mentioned earlier, it's, we also are always looking for candidates who take initiative, who have that flexibility, who really can sort of take a project and make it their own and gain a lot out of it. Um, with that said, what, what Civic Spark is not is it's not going to be a program where you're out in the community or not behind a, a desk on a very often um, period of time. There are the service days, there are the training days, and these are great opportunities to, to get outside of the office, but this really is working within an office atmosphere. You're behind a computer maybe 90% of your time, and although you might have some high outreach or communication and network building, a lot of it is done over the phone or over email. Um, so I do always just like to make that expectation very clear. Candidates should be prepared to work in an office environment, um, you know, up to 40, 40 hours per week on their projects. With that said, it is, again, a great opportunity to build a strong professional network, gain practical skill sets, and make a lasting impact in your local community. So with that said, I will go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, if anyone does have any questions, I will also repeat that if you haven't taken time to jump onto our website, it is civicspark.lgc.org, and I highly recommend doing that. We will um, have an announcement that goes out out once the application is open, and that should happen within the next two weeks. And at that point of time, we will be reviewing applications and starting the interview process basically immediately. So if this is a program that you are interested in, um, I would definitely encourage you to apply early so that you can be considered for all of the different projects that we do have. Um, if there are also specific questions that you don't want to bring up now, my contact information is hopefully up on the screen now. It is kbrewbaker at lgc.org, and you should feel free to contact me with any questions that don't get covered. Um, I think at this point of time, we've covered any of the questions that have come in as I've been talking, but I'll take a few minutes um, just in case anyone has any other questions please feel free to type them in now. Okay, since no other questions, questions have come in, I'll go ahead and end the webinar here. Again, my contact information is up. If anyone has any additional questions after we get off this webinar, please feel free to contact me. Thank you again to Kyle and Laura for sharing your experience, and thank you for all of you attending the webinar today. Have a great day.